We're pleased to release another Old Time Radio episode and add it to our YouTube library. This one is entitled Dodge City Killer. It's a Gunsmoke episode that originally aired May 17, 1952. This version is directed by Ron Banaszak. It's recorded by Bob Diomita and Mark Goldman. Enjoy! Welcome. Tonight, Pelican Players, your local community theater for the Sun City Center, Ruskin, Waimama, Riverview, Apollo Beach, and surrounding area has the pleasure of entertaining you with another show by the Pelican Players Radio Theater. The cast is made up of all volunteer local residents. We will introduce the cast following tonight's show. And now... Tonight's performance. Brown Dodge City in the territory out west. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with the U.S. Marshal. And the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. for you, Mike. Uh, how many, Matt? I'll play these. Oh, so that is the way the wind smells. <laughs> I take two. Maybe you think you bluff your friend, boy, with just a little? Ten dollars to teach you to stay honest. Pass me. You and me, Moreau. Ten and ten more. Make it thirty. Hmm, Fifty. Seventy-five. Make it a hundred. Oh. Maybe you don't bluff. Maybe. No, no, I, I think you have it this time. I save my money and throw my sweet kings away. Matt, you have a good hand? Big bets as good as a big hand. No! That came from the hall. Yeah. Take, take your hand off me! Oh, now, Annie. Ty time you and I had a little romance. Hey, what'd you do that for? You wouldn't know if I told you, Grace. Annie? I'm all right, Marshal. He just pawed me a bit. Now, I'm gonna shoot his pop eyes out. A gun! No, Annie, don't! Oh, darn you, Marshal! Did you have to knock my gun away? I had him cold. Better go back to the dance hall. Don't bother, Annie. You're fired. Annie, you heard me. Go back to work. Oh, yes, Marshal. Huh. I'm oh, sorry I lost my temper. You're out of line, Dylan. This is my hotel. My dance hall. She stays fired. And he stays here. And one more deal like tonight earns you a trip to jail. You can't talk to me like that. I'm a big man in this town. Big or little, walking or feet first. I'll take you in. You have my word on that.
Thanks, Annie. That was nice. I like to play for you, Marshall. A girl ought to have a man to play for. Uh, sorry to bother you, Mr. Dillon. Mm hmm? Well, hello, Chester. Hello, Miss Annie. You sure look fine in your new hat. Miss Moreau got it for me special clear from Chicago. What is it, Chester? Some trouble in the lobby, Mr. Dillon. There's a man at the desk asking for you. His name is Yar. Clancy Yar. When did he get in? Just now. Is he a friend of yours, Mr. Dillon? I'll tell any man he is. Why? He's got a woman with him, his, his wife. So? Well, sir, she... Well, she's an Indian. I left the dance hall part of the building, and in the lobby I saw Clancy draped over the desk, looking as tall and hungry as ever. To one side, a tiny girl was standing, her head proudly erect, her black eyes glittering defiantly. So get her out, mister. Ain't no murderin' the Redskins get in a room at my hotel. Hello, Clancy. Welcome to Dodge. Matt. Matt Dillon, you black-hearted old gunslinger. All right, you. Now get this squaw out of here. Shut up, Grace. Clancy, I'd take it an honor to meet your wife. Narisha? Narisha, this is Matt Dillon. Matt, my wife, Narisha, daughter of Black Eagle. I am honored to meet my friend's wife, and also the daughter of the great warrior chief, Black Eagle. You know my father. His fame is as the sun. Not only among the Comanche nations, but among all men who respect a brave and worthy leader. That's mighty fancy talk. But look here, Dylan. I insist you get that little savage out of here. Grace! Huh? Don't press your luck. Ah, oh, now, Marshal, uh, I didn't mean no... What room are you giving, my friends? Room? But I... Uh, six, I guess. The key? And let your guests know they're welcome. Here. Welcome to the Grace Hotel. Thanks for that business downstairs, Matt. I was on the verge of pouring that mealy mouth. Oh, forget it, Clancy. Uh-huh. Well, Grace sure better keep out of Narisha's way. He's kind of sudden when she gets mad. He is bad man. Speak with evil tongue. Oh, Clancy! A real bad... Oh. <laughs> Look! Look! It jumps and talks! <laughs> don't, don't bust it, woman! If you act sweet and nice, maybe I'll buy one of them talking beds here and we'll fetch it home with us. Oh! <laughs> All for me? All for me? Well, I kind of figured to be somewheres around. Oh, I'd be sweet, you see. Hey, man, let go. Stop it, woman. Don't dad blast it. I never should have taught her how to kiss. Oh, my. Uh, I'll, I'll be running along, Clancy. Matt, maybe it was a dumb play, bringing the rich into Dodge. But I had to have you see her. I, I'm awful proud of her, Matt. You should be. She's beautiful. And as decent as any white girl I ever met. I don't mind being called a squaw man, Matt. But I sure hate it when they pick on her. They won't. Not if I'm around. You are a good man. I like you. You be my friend, too. I will, Narisha.
Bonjour, Marshal. Afternoon, Moreau. Um, give me a box of shotgun shells, two of 45s and one of 3030s. Oh, and a needle and some thread. Oh, what a call. What color sweat? Doesn't matter as long as it's strong enough to hold my socks together. Ah, oh, then I give you green. A dozen spools? One. A half dozen, perhaps. One. For you, uh, a bargain. Four spools for the price of three. <laughs> How many spools you stuck with? The gross. How could I know that in George there's only one woman with a green dress? She can't sew. <laughs> oh, pick a dozen, Matt. I give you this can of peaches free. One. But I'll buy the peaches. Oh, good. Uh, Marshal, I know you do not wish to talk about it, but you should know it, it is about your friend's wife. I've heard. They're talking of running Mrs. Yar out of town. How do you feel, Moreau? Me? Oh, Matt, I am the Frenchman. Uh, more even than money, I love the romance. Uh, and your friend, that is beautiful Indian bride, oh, so in love they are. Like children. But uh, she is Comanche. It means trouble. Very bad trouble. Walking to the Grace Hotel that evening, I noticed the town seemed deathly quiet, as if the very buildings were waiting for something to happen. By the time Clancy, Marisha, and I finished dinner and two hours of reminiscing, my nerves relaxed a little. Then when Marisha retired, Clancy and I went down the hall to join the poker game and found a stranger sitting in. He was wearing a black frock coat, two ivory-handled guns, and the thin smile of a killer who enjoys his work. Uh, Clancy R., uh, Marshal Dillon, this is Monsieur Oyen. A pleasure, sirs. I hope you don't mind me joining your game. It's an open game, Mr. Wade. Thanks. Yeah. Same Morgan Wade who carried a gun for Chisholm down in the Big Ben country? I worked for Jesse. I recall a Morgan Wade who threw lead for McSween during the Lincoln County War. All past now. I've given up the hard life. Cards? Uh, two for me, monsieur. Who pays your salary here, Wade? My, you are direct, aren't you, Marshal? But I don't mind telling you, I work for Grace. As what? Let's say as a finisher. And my first job is on you. Get your hands up. Quick. All of you. Not a bad draw at that, was it, Matt? Well, he's no Wes Harden, but it was pretty slick considering he was sitting. What is this? I said to- We heard you, monsieur. Please, don't shoot. Do you think I won't shoot? Not if you're smart. One thing, if you shot one of us, you'd have to shoot us all to be shut of our mouths. Oh, and even Jack Grace would not stand for that, Wade. I am surprised that Grace would think you could bluff us. Bluff, is it? There's another reason why that would be a foolish idea, Wade. It's in my lap, with the muzzle aimed right at your belt. What? I guess you ought to know, mister. My 44th pointing in the same direction. Oh, mine is only a 22 Derringer, Mr. Wade. But it, it too points at you under the table. But I... that is... It goes to show you, my friend. Never draw on a man unless you can see his hands. It seems, uh, gentlemen, uh, I have made a little mistake. 
it seems. Empty them and holster them. Goodbye, Mr. Wade. If I were you, I'd eat tomorrow's breakfast in another town. As you say, Marshal. You've taught me a lesson tonight. And it's no shame to be beaten by three of a kind. You can all put up your guns. Guns? Guns! Don't know about the others, but I never drew my gun. Glad I didn't know that, Matt. I'd been a mite nervous seeing as how my gun was in leather, too. <laughs> Myself, <laughs> I am the peaceful storekeeper. <laughs> oh, I hate guns so much, I, I never carry one. Why, you lying, two-faced bunch of... Get out, Wade. I'm going, Marshal. But no one can run a shindy like this on Morgan Wade. Not and stay alive. Huh. Good night, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see his face? Man, we sure tore up his pride. Mr. <laughs> Dillon, you better come quick. Narisha just now... Something happened to my wife? What is it, Chester? Tell it. Tell it, man. Narisha. She stabbed Jack Grace. I think he's dying. <laughs> he's lying near the stairs, Mr. Dillon. I was afraid to move him. Knife's still in his chest. You send for the doc? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. She, she did do it, man. She could. Easy, Clancy. Grace? Grace! Oh, no, pull it out! Pull it out, please! Dylan, pull out the knife! I can't. If I do, you'll bleed to death. Oh, I'm dying anyway. What's the difference? Pull out for me. I'm burning inside. Please! All right, Grace. <sighs> That's better. Doesn't hurt much now. I just feel sleepy. Who did it, Grace? Hmm? Who knifed you? Why? Teresha stabbed me, the dirty little sa- Ugh. He, he lied. He lied, Matt. I... I hope so. He sure scratched up. Scratches all over his face. Teeth marks on his arm. Oh, ever seen this knife before? It... it's hers. But she didn't kill him, Matt. Let's talk to her, Clancy. Stay here, Chester. Yes, sir. You know she couldn't murder anyone, Matt. You know that. Oh, okay, here is your room. Narisha? Matt. What is it? Matt. She's run away. <laughs> going after her, Matt? I have to. Don't suppose it'd do any good to, to remind you of our friendship. I have to bring her back, Clancy. She's killed a man. Man? You call that foul-tongued lecher a man? Yeah. I can remember when we you... We can and... both remember a lot, Clancy. But it doesn't do us any good now. I've got a job to do. You know I'll do it. Yeah, I know, Matt. I'm just not sure we're going to be friends much longer, you and I. I hope we are. Can can I ride with you? Well, I... I... Y you have my word I won't pull anything. If in my word's worth anything to you. It's worth something, but... I, I... All, all I want is to see she doesn't get hurt. Narisha's only a kid. She'll be scared, Matt. She'll need me. All right, Clancy. Get your horse. Thanks, Matt. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mr. Dillon. Have any luck in the stable? No, sir. She didn't take her own horse. Guess she was in too much of a hurry. She took Fred Gayson's big gray from the hitch rack in front of the hotel and rode north. He's hopping mad about it. Fred's, eh? Huh. Marisha knows her horse flesh. That big gray can run all day without raising a sweat. Yes, sir. And there was a rifle in the saddle boot. Everyone's waiting for you to pick up your posse, Mr. Dillon. Tell them to go home. There'll be no posse. What? Clancy and I are going alone. I'm not going to take a chance of some trigger-happy saloon bum shooting that girl. They'll be awful mad. They'll sure think you and Clancy are framing up to get the girl away. I'm not sure I care what they think. Do as I say, Chester. You can cheer them up by telling them I'll bring her back. If they're real lucky, she'll be convicted and they can watch her hang. are getting fresher. By the looks of it, she's making a swing around into the mountains north of Belfont. She's trying to stay in the neighborhood. Why doesn't she ride straight for the border? I have a hunch she wants to stay near you. Come on, we'll cut her sign where she circles back. Having trouble? Oh, uh, Narisha must think that Gray's a mountain goat. She's taking trails that aren't fit to walk on, much less ride. She was born on a horse. Uh-huh. These are bridle paths to her. Yeah. Well, she's going for the peak, that's sure. We'll push on to that little mesa there and camp for tonight. Camp? When does a manhunter like you stop and make camp? Since now. I'm not hunting a man this time. More coffee, Clancy? No, thanks. Ah. Sure like coffee boils over a campfire. Fire's easy to see at night. Uh-huh. Just about anyone in these mountains could spot a fire like this. Yep. Even Narisha. I should have known. I'm warning her so she can get away. I'm sorry, I Don't said be that. sorry. The fire's not a warning to her. But she's bound to see yeah. it. Yeah, she'll investigate it, I think. The way I figure, when she sees it's just you and I, she'll come in. You rotten, rock-hearted machine. It's only... You don't miss a bet. Do you? Would you rather I chased her into a corner and frightened her into a shootout? No. No, I guess you're right, Matt. I don't think Narisha would fire on you, but maybe it is easier this way. Clancy? Yeah? You know Narisha stabbed Grace. <sighs> yeah, I know. But why? Why? Will you give me an honest answer to a question, no matter what the cost? If it can help, Narisha. It might. Ask it. And no, I won't lie to you. Do you believe she could commit a deliberate murder because of Grace's comments? No. I swear on my soul, Matt. Narisha could never commit a deliberate murder. Ah, that's all I wanted to know. 
does. Does that mean It you... means I believe she's innocent of murder. I'm sure I know what happened. With any luck, I'll prove... Ah! Hit the dirt. Get out of the firelight. You get tagged? Oh, just a crease across my ribs. I'm okay. Nerisha? Hardly. Whoever's doing the shooting's on that slope up there. So? So, it's 200 yards off and a downhill shot to boot. I've seen Nerisha shoot too many times. At that distance, she couldn't hit the state of Texas, much less a man. Looks like whoever it is decided to save his shells. I reckon. You really ought to pay the lad a visit after him sending in his calling cards so polite-like. You feel like a little stroll up that slope? Now that you mention it, I do. Take the left and circle in on him. I'll make sure we both get him spotted right. Watching? Watching. Come on, you bushwhacker. Here's your target. There you are. You okay? Okay, but that boy's a real gunner. He misses close. Let's go teach him better manners. It's a tricky business, stalking an armed gunman in the dark. But Clancy and I had learned the trade from too many Indian fights where you become an expert or a corpse. It took me a full half hour to make my circle around the ambusher's position, holding my gun ready. I saw a shadow take shape in the rocks, but as I aimed, the night's silence was broken. <laughs> Marisha, so it was you. You are a wonderful hunter. You quiet like the Comanche. Oh, I should be. They taught me. You little idiot, I might have shot you. <laughs> did not let you do that. I watch when you get close. I'll take that rifle, Marisha. Oh, yes, Matt. Marisha? Oh, Nerisha! My husband is mad at me. Oh, oh, mad. Oh, no, never, my crazy little girl. Oh, Nerisha. <gasps> Blood. Oh, you are hurt. One of your shots was lucky. My shot? But, but, I don't shoot. <laughs> I, I forget to tell you. Tell us what? The man who shoots at you. I hit him. What? What? With a rock. I see him shoot at you and I get very mad. I hit him hard. Where? Well, on head. No, no, I mean, where is he now? Well, there, under that big rock. I push it on him so he don't go away. Well, I'll be. Well, he's here all right. Who is it? Well, my friend from the poker game, Morgan Wade. Yeah, he's alive, but I'd sure hate to have his head when he wakes up in jail tomorrow. Put him on a horse, Clancy, and let's get back to town. Matt. Yes? You take me to jail? I don't want to go to jail. Oh, I'm afraid you must. For a while, Marisha. But don't be frightened. They, they hang me. They hate me and dodge. I'm taking you to Hayes City for a fair trial.
Mr. Dillon, Judge Craddock will see us now. Thanks, Chester. Let's go. Worried? Nerisha's not afraid. <laughs> Good girl. Yes, yes. Uh, come in, Marshal. Uh, you've read the plea, Judge Craddock? Uh, of course. Now, let's see. Hmm. My, my. Yes. Mrs. Nerisha Yar stabbed to death one John Grace in Dodge City. Mrs. Yar wishes to throw herself in the mercy of the Hayes City Court. Why? Due to known bias in Dodge City and the impossibility of selecting an impartial jury in this area, Your Honor. Uh, because she's an Indian, eh? Uh, go on, Marshal. Her plea is innocent by reason of self-defense. Got a lawyer? No, sir. She'll speak for herself. Go on, Narisha. Tell him exactly what happened. We fight. I kill him. Um, I'm afraid I need a few more details. Uh, yes, sir. It was late, but I could not sleep. I go downstairs to take a walk. On stairs, Mr. Grace meet me. Say funny things to me. Funny? Bad things. You know. Go on. Well, I get mad. Tell him to shut up. He get mad and grab me. Make me kiss him. We fight. Well, why didn't you scream for help? Help? I'm not afraid of him. Just mad. <laughs> I see. I don't get very mad until he tear my dress. But when he do... I bite his arm. I have a knife. I use it. Then I am afraid. I know people in town hate so me. So you ran away? Yes, sir. And gave herself up voluntarily, Your Honor. Any substantiation of this story? You have affidavits from the doctor and witnesses to the bite and scratches on the deceased arm and face. Also an affidavit from the doctor who examined Mrs. Yar. Oh, yes. Yeah, some uh, severe bruises around the arms and throat. And from Miss Annie Davis, who states that Jack Grace had a habit of forcing his attentions on her and other girls working in his establishment. I am convinced by the evidence before me that uh, Mrs. Yar is innocent of any criminal act. Such a mess of trouble, Matt. Forget it. You got a wonderful wife, Clancy. You're a lucky man. Sure, and I know it. Matt, who's wrong? It's still a frontier country, Clancy. Lots of fresh memories of loved ones who died and, and left their scouts dying on Black Eagle's lodgepole. And who lied, cheated, and stole from Black Eagle until he had to fight back? White men. But people whose hearts are broken don't think of right or wrong. You have to give them time. Time to forget. I reckon so. Ready, Narisha? Work. Hasta la vista, Matt. Take care. Goodbye, my friend, Matt. Goodbye, Narissa. Chester? Yes, Mr. Dillon? Let you and I go to the Long Branch and open up a bottle of rye. Come on.
Thank you for listening to the Pelican Players Community Theater production of Gunsmoke, Dodge City Killer. Originally aired on May 17, Tonight's cast is composed of Dan Tackett as Matt Dillon, Ron Banizak as Chester and the announcer, Donna Fiore as Narisha and Annie, Guy Bailey as Clancy, Kevin Steinke as Maru and Jack Grace, Stephen Price as Wade and the Judge, Bob DeLamedia handled recording, sound effects, and post-production. Mike Goldman was sound technician, Lori Failing and Alexis Swinson handled microphones. We hope you can join us the last Friday night of each month for another Pelican Players Radio Theater show. Please be safe, stay well, and thanks for listening. Good night.